Fly me to the moon Where goslings and the stars Hey guys, Jeremy here, and I got a review for First Man here. Now this was a film that, I admit, kind of intrigued me, for one. Ryan Gosling's in it, of course. Also, Damien Chazelle, who has directed two very heavy music-based films, Whiplash and La La Land, was directing this movie, which is very interesting. Going from music to space is kind of a jump, but I was interested to see how he would handle it, it to show whether he could make something other than just a music-based movie. And at least to say, he does. This actually is a pretty interesting, very personal, reflection on Neil Armstrong himself. It's not so much about the NASA and Apollo program, because that whips by. It whips by very quickly. However, it does focus on Neil's struggles, not only with trying to complete the mission, make the mission happen, but also with own his own family. There's a lot of things that I never knew. I never knew he had a daughter. I never knew that he had such a personal kind of inner reflection and this struggle within himself. I'll be honest, the last 20 minutes of the movie or so, as incredible as it was to see it shot, I actually didn't care too much for the ending because everyone knows that. It's what happens before they leave is what's so interesting. Talking about all the failed experiments, all the insinuations, um, the Apollo test failure that happened. Now the one thing I'm going to complain about a little bit is how this film was shot. It's very interesting considering it was filmed by the exact same cinematographer of La La Land, Linus Sandgren, if I'm correct. He went from that film, which was incredibly well shot in terms of just how smooth that movie felt. This is different. It kind of goes for a documentary sort of style sort of filming. And when they're in the spaceship, that very personal, very enclosed sort of filming aspect worked. Damien definitely takes a lot of notes from Interstellar because there's a lot of this use of only being aside the ship or in the ship that you never really see anything flying off by itself. It's all on the ship itself. So definitely some model work. So again, a lot of interstellar sort of vibes there. However, when they're on Earth, the camera's doing this all the goddamn time and admittedly at first it wasn't so bad and then there's some sequences where at one point Ryan Gosling's getting in his car to drive away and I honestly felt like the cameraman was having a seizure. There's a point where it just gets to be too much and there is a lot of it. I understand that whole documentary-esque style but it just takes away from the film and the fact that I saw this in IMAX is just irritating. It's not nausea for me but it's just irritating. That's another thing too. This film was boasted about, oh, you must see it in IMAX, and Universal and apparently never released a movie full IMAX cut before filmed on an IMAX camera. And what do they do? Apparently, just before the film's about to be released, they decide to cancel the IMAX prints of the film. So what we see at the end, which was all the fucking talk about the whole moon lunar shit being shot with IMAX cameras, they fake it. I hate when they boast about using IMAX technology and they don't actually use it. The film itself is pretty decent. Ryan Gosling gives a really good performance. Claire Foy is okay, she's his wife. There's a few scenes here and there when she actually has some pretty interesting parts, but she's kind of just stuck as being the wife. There's not really much you can do with that. It's not just saying of that she's just there. But his interactions with the NASA program, his own kind of strifes with his own conflicts were actually really interesting to see unfold. And like I said, this is a different perspective of what we've seen from most of the movies about the Apollo missions. So I did like that. If you're watching this movie for Apollo facts, you're not going to get that much because like I said, it just spins by really quickly. And there's a something at the end that I kind of wonder if it was dramatized or if it actually happened because the ending is its a bit of a dramatic note. It's actually a pretty touching note, but I kind of wonder if it actually did happen. Again, I'll have to look into that. I did enjoy the movie, but again, the final 20 minutes is not exactly the most interesting for me just because I already know so much. I've already read so much about the whole Apollo mission thing. The beginning of the film up to just before they leave is actually pretty interesting. Afterwards, it's kind of like, okay, you've seen this a million times. So, in the end, First Man is an enjoyable film. It's not really a rewatchable film, for me at least, but it is still a well-made movie. 
And I definitely give Damien Chazelle credit for doing a movie that is completely unrelated to music. So, But he does throw some music bits in. The score is pretty well done as well. So my final score for First Man is a 5 out of 7. It's an enjoyable movie. Maybe not the most enjoyable film. It's definitely got a little bit of pacing kind of slumps here and there. And again, the cinematography is not the greatest in my opinion. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time.